the most popular points of interest in San Francisco revolve around a huge red bridge and a deserted prison. However, prior to transforming into a family-friendly tour costing $60, Alcatraz functioned as a highly secure federal penitentiary that housed numerous notorious individuals, specifically male inmates. Today we will delve into the first-hand experiences of being incarcerated in Alcatraz. But before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Interesting Day. Alcatraz enforced strict limitations on cell occupancy, permitting only one inmate per cell. The prison generally maintained a population of 330 men, ensuring individual cells for enhanced safety and privacy. Consequently, Alcatraz became the desired vacation spot, resembling the luxurious Maldives for certain federal prisoners who sought an all-inclusive experience during their mandatory stays. The cells were divided into different blocks, with blocks B and C housing a total of 336 cells, each measuring a snug 5 feet by 9 feet. Cell block A, however, was in dire need of renovation. With its rundown row of cells holding untapped potential, this block was rarely utilized for prolonged inmate stays. Cell block D was specifically reserved for those sentenced to solitary confinement. Although these cells were larger than the average ones, inmates were compelled to spend 24 hours a day within this confined space, with the exception of a weekly opportunity to spend time in the recreation yard. Solitary confinement could range from a few days to several weeks, leading former inmate Jim Quinlan to describe a day in the hole as an endless eternity. In Alcatraz, prisoners were entitled to only four essential provisions. Nourishment, attire, accommodation, and medical attention, while other privileges, such as library access, had to be earned. Upon arrival at Alcatraz, inmates would be dressed in the standard prison uniform, undergo a showering process, and receive a brief medical examination during their visit to the clothing room, where strip searches were also conducted. The residents of Alcatraz were provided with three daily meals, a legally mandated shelter they were not permitted to leave, and the opportunity for visitation and medical care if required, including dental and psychiatric services, offered at the prison's hospital. Robert Stroud, known as the Birdman, spent a significant portion of his 17-year sentence in the hospital due to a kidney infection and the need for isolation due to his dangerous nature. The Alcatraz Library contained an extensive collection of books for inmates to read, granted they earned the privilege. However, this privilege could be revoked for misconduct, and inmates were not allowed to physically visit the library. Instead, those with library privileges would request items from a catalog each morning, and the requested books, magazines, etc. would be delivered to their cells with any content related to crime removed beforehand. Reading was one of the few leisure activities available to inmates, and some took full advantage of the library's offerings. They used this opportunity to study law, learn languages, or take correspondence classes from the University of California at Berkeley. Other recreational activities, such as chess or softball, as well as visitation with family members and work duty, could be earned through good behavior. In the 1950s, prisoners were given access to headsets for listening to the radio and watching movies in the auditorium. However, similar to library privileges, any of these privileges could be revoked if an inmate misbehaved. The Alcatraz Band, known as the Rock Islanders, consisted of inmates who had earned the right to participate. Though the band had a rotating lineup over the years, positions within the band were highly sought after. Even Al Capone himself pleaded to join, and eventually, he was allowed. Capone shared with his son that he had learned to play various instruments and eventually mastered over 500 songs. Former guard George Gregory described the band as being of a lower standard, but it greatly boosted the inmates' self-esteem. The band performed during holidays in the dining hall, with occasional Sunday and special event performances. Cells at Alcatraz were of a considerably small size and lacked many amenities. Upon arrival at Alcatraz, Jim Quinlan, who would later become a reviewer on Yelp and was known for his tough demeanor, expressed his disappointment with his new living space. 
He observed that all he had in his cell was a steel bed, a mattress made of straw, and a pillow that was dirty and lumpy. He further mentioned that the toilet lacked a seat and the wash basin had only one tap, providing only cold water. Inmates were prohibited from bringing in personal belongings, and since Alcatraz did not have a gift shop at that time, there were limited comforts available. However, in the 1950s, prison regulations were modified, allowing inmates to purchase certain items such as textbooks, correspondence courses, musical instruments, or magazine subscriptions. The initial warden of Alcatraz, James A. Johnston, was a strict individual who implemented a policy of silence within the prison. This rule was enforced until 1937, during which inmates were expected to remain quiet under Johnston's watchful gaze. According to Johnston's regulation, prisoners were only allowed to speak during mealtimes or recreational activities. However, the warden displayed leniency towards their smoking habits, permitting inmates to consume up to three packs of cigarettes per week. This meant that smoking cigarettes became more prevalent than verbal communication at Alcatraz. The incarcerated individuals at Alcatraz were provided with three daily meals, breakfast served at 6.45 a.m., lunch at 11.40 a.m., and a reasonable dinner at 4.25 in the afternoon. It was rumored that the food at Alcatraz was of superior quality compared to other federal prisons. The kitchen staff at Alcatraz took pride in their culinary skills, with some having backgrounds in the culinary arts. In 1938, former inmate Brian Conway recalled that the food at Alcatraz was much better than the typical prison fare. He mentioned that dinner consisted of meat, beans, coffee, bread, and celery, while supper included chili, tomatoes, apples, and hot tea. According to a menu from 1946, breakfast included stewed fruits, cereal, milk, bread, and coffee. Lunch, being the largest meal of the day, featured soup and meat such as roasted pork shoulder or beef pot pie. Dinner sometimes consisted of leftovers from the elaborate lunches, fit for royalty, and even included desserts like apple pie or cake. Work became the main way for inmates at this federal prison to pass the time. They had various job opportunities in the laundry, kitchen, or on the docks. Inmates would march to their jobs after breakfast and earn a modest wage of 5 to 12 cents per hour. Certain industry jobs allowed prisoners to reduce their sentence by a few days each month worked. Counting of prisoners was done several times a day to keep track of their whereabouts. Metal detectors were used to search for contraband, but sometimes they were overly sensitive or failed to detect prohibited items. Correspondence with the outside world was limited and monitored, with letters being regulated and approved by prison officials. Visitation was also heavily regulated, with prisoners earning the right for a 90-minute visit once a month. During visits, Conversations were closely monitored and any mention of other inmates would lead to the termination of the visit. In the iconic 1979 film Escape from Alcatraz, escaping the prison seemed nearly impossible. However, despite the risks, 14 different attempts were made by 36 prisoners throughout the prison's existence. Leaving the island was extremely dangerous, except by boat. One prisoner, Joe Bowers, tragically lost his life while trying to climb over a fence. Theodore Cole and Ralph Rose managed to escape, but their ill-fated swim to San Francisco ended in them being lost at sea. Multiple unsuccessful escape attempts occurred in 1938, 1939, 1941, and 1943. In 1945, John Giles cleverly created an army uniform and made it to Angel Island before being recaptured. The following year, the Battle of Alcatraz erupted when six prisoners overpowered guards, leading to a riot and the loss of lives. Some prisoners tried to swim away, but none succeeded. In 1962, Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers vanished from their cells, inspiring the film Escape from Alcatraz. It's believed they escaped through drain pipes and attempted to swim to safety, although their fate remains unknown. So what do you think of Alcatraz? Share your thoughts in the comments.
Thank you for joining us on Interesting Day. See you next time.